Hi, I'm Victoria Matthews. This is my coursework one submission for the Artistic Leadership module on the MA Contemporary Performance Practices course at the University of East London. So the organisation that I'm going to be talking about today for my coursework one is Tempting Failure Festival. I have a personal connection to the festival, uh, working as the associate to the artistic director, Thomas John Bacon. Uh, aside from this, also I think that the festival is a perfect example of all of the things we associate and talk about uh, when we're discussing artistic leadership. For those of you unfamiliar with Tempting Failure and what it's about, it's a London-based biennial festival of performance art and noise art, uh, particularly invested in the support of performance art and noise art, as well as the professional development of artists at all stages of their career, including emergent artists being programmed next to more established international artists. It also is interested in the education of all, so one of the reasons I've decided to talk about it as uh, in conjunction with artistic leadership is its engagement with wider communities outside of the London art scene. So to provide you with a timeline or brief history of Tempting Failure. Its conception came about in 2011 as uh, Thomas was completing a PhD at the University of Bristol. The following year it came to fruitation and uh, had its first run in London. 2013 the festival moved to Bristol uh, in the venue The Island and the focus of the festival shifted from a body art experience to this consideration of risk, rejection and failure. That's a theme I think that remains consistent in the years following. Um, so yeah, in 2016, which is when I joined as the associate to Thomas, the festival returned to London and we hosted 85 artists from 13 different countries in 11 locations across five different London boroughs. Uh, the festival now exists as a biannual event um, starting from So an element or maybe an ethos of the festival that I think demonstrates one of the primary traits of authentic artistic leadership is its commitment to evolution. Uh, every year the festival has run. <clears throat> um, it's avoided becoming complacent in actions and even its form. So the first year it's focused as a body art festival transforming into this uh, challenging of risk and failure into the second year in Bristol um, and then in its third year becoming a sonic immersion experience at the Latitude Festival so it's always reappearing and changing and evolving and I think that that's something that should be considered paramount in artistic leadership. Um, I think also that, that this element reminded me of a discussion we'd had with Deborah Pearsons in the first week of our artist talks. Um, Deborah had mentioned that even at the Forest Fringe, they actively looked for ways to keep the curation and the um, operation of the festival fresh and exciting and new. 
the second trait of tempting failure that I think is worth discussing in this conversation of artistic leadership is its support and dedication to emergent artists. And one of the most exciting part of the festival is uh, supporting artists at all these different stages of their career. Um, the example I would use is its mentoring scheme. Um, they lobby for a, a partnership between emergent artists and more established international artists um, who work in conjunction leading up to the festival um, and allows that sharing of information and experience and networking for younger artists, which is very exciting to me. The third or a third uh, element that tempting failure, I think, demonstrates when, talk, well, when in conversation about the way it demonstrates artistic leadership is um, its dedication to community engagement and acquiring audiences out of the uh, artistic community. Um, the way in which it demonstrates that, I think, is its placement and the, the diverse locations involved in its placement. So when I was working at the 2016 festival, um, the decision to pick venues in certain locations around London, such as Croydon, um, that aren't necessarily associated with this type of work or this kind of event um, was deliberate in its attempt to draw in audiences from yeah, different communities. And I think that that links to the artistic leadership idea because it's driving forward who we deliver our art to and questions who art is for. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I think, uh, and one of the most important elements I'd like to discuss is the festival's celebration and encouragement of failure as a starting block or as the result of the work that's presented there. Um, I think that's linked really into my own practice or ethos as an artistic leader. Um, and I like that work that perhaps has failed in the past is welcome to be readdressed at a festival like this um, because there's so much we can learn from failure um, and so much I already have learned from my own failures. Um, yeah, I think that addressing failure as a innovative way to inspire progress in your work is something that I seek to do a lot myself. One of the mm, reasons I've even chosen to speak about tempting failure is having worked behind the scenes and seen the framework and everything that goes into the festival, it is totally mirroring and inspiring what I would like to do for the artistic community and wider community of Cardiff. Um, really, I think I was so lucky to be able to get the role that I do have um, as associate to the artistic director because I'm able now to learn and watch how I might operate my own festival and create, inspire and support performance arts in Cardiff.